Did you know that 57% of projects fail because of a breakdown in communication? What if I told you that there was a system that anybody could use that can stop miscommunication right in its tracks? If you're a project manager or interested in project management like me, you've probably heard the term Gantt chart before. In fact, Gantt charts are a cornerstone of project management and a great tool to keep your team on track. In this video, we'll cover what a Gantt chart is, why they're effective, and how they have been successfully used in the past. So what is a Gantt chart? My guess is that you've seen them before. They look just like this, a bar chart with dates that mark the start and finish of the parts of a project. They're laid out in order of when a task needs to be completed. Let's take teddy bears as an example. You can't ship it off before stuffing the toy's fur or dressing it. There's a clearer progression of events. This Gantt chart shows the progress of how to build a Vermont teddy bear as described by Karen Collins. At this point, you might be thinking to yourself, I understand the concept, but I don't understand why people would use Gantt charts to begin with. Consider these four reasons. First, Gantt charts outline clear start and end dates for all tasks. They're a clear visual representation of expectations and key dates for task completion. Secondly, they foster communication across the team. They let everyone know who is doing what at what time. Thirdly, Gantt charts show how tasks relate to one another. In other words, they force their creators to figure out the sequence of tasked events and assignments. And finally, Gantt charts help outline the bigger picture. They keep users in scope, on budget, and on time, while forcing key decisions on a clean timeline. These are all great ideas in theory, but the real question is, do they work? The short answer is yes. Le let me give you an example. You've probably heard of the Hoover Dam, right? By the time it was built in 1935, it was the largest dam in the world, built in a brutal climate by 21,000 construction workers. But what you probably don't know is that the Hoover Dam was one of the first major successes that historians have attributed to Gantt charts. In fact, this planning methodology was so effective that the Hoover Dam was completed two years ahead of schedule. Now that's good planning. Of course, there are objections to Gantt charts. These are the major three. One, as an inflexible project management system, Gantt charts do not offer quick solutions to addressing problems with an unforeseen event. Two, it can become tedious to consistently update the chart or expect teammates to keep their personal charts updated. And three, Gantt charts are largely used in display of how far along a project will be at a certain point in time. There's not much space on the typical Gantt chart to elaborate on task expectations or even purpose. But these objections don't necessarily undermine the value of Gantt charts. They provide a visual representation of when each project should start and end. They keep all team members apprised of how far along a project is, when each task should be completed, and how long the team has until the final deliverable is due. If you want to learn more about project management and Gantt charts, subscribe to this channel and check out my blog here.